I'm going to walk through the steps on how to set up Python for the first time in Linux. And I'll show you how to do it in Windows as well, Mac OS. But in this one, I'm just focusing on Linux. Uh, what we have here is just Python. If I type it, it doesn't found. This is on Ubuntu. If I do Python 3 and version, then I can see that it's Python 3.8.2. Okay, so that's the very first thing. You want to see what's available on your computer. You can also on Windows, you can do where Python, um, or if you're on a Linux, you can do which Python, or you can do which Python 3. And it'll show you the path to that executable. Okay, so um, now what we want to do is if you have Python installed, then we want to install something called pip, and pip is our package manager. And uh, this one, okay, it's not found, pip3 is not there either so if we need to install it we're going to use apt to install python 3 dash pip okay it's going to go out and install it if you're on windows and you get it from python.org then uh, pip is included it's just in your scripts folder of your installation directory okay so here it is uh, python 3 uh, pip and now if I do pip3 it gives me some help and now I can start installing packages that I need or I can just start uh, running Python as well I'm just going to edit a test script and this one I'll just print hello world and I'll do control exit control X and I'll say yes and enter Okay, so now I have this test.py, and it is just that one line. Okay, now I want to run it. So now I'm going to do Python 3. Okay, Python 3, and then test.py, and it just ran the Python program. Okay, so that's very basic to be able to run a Python program from the command line. You just have to say, what version of Python you want to use to run it, and then the script name. But let's say we want to have an integrated development environment. There are a few options, and I have them outlined on the right. Let's go ahead and first of all do the Jupyter Notebook install. Jupyter Lab is like a next generation of Jupyter Notebook. It has more features. Uh, it's a full integrated development environment. And then VS Code is also very nice as well, although there are others like PyCharm, uh, spider and other integrated development environments but let's just do these pip3 install notebook is the first one that I'll show okay so it's gonna go and collect everything and then once that is installed then I can do Jupyter notebook okay and so now you're gonna see a web page open here and I can create a new Python 3 notebook and I can do print hello world control okay enter to run it or shift enter to also get a cell below it and I can also import numpy as mp for example and then lin space between 0 and 1 <clears throat> okay so there is just a basic Jupyter notebook if I save it Okay, I can uh, uh, rename it here, and this is just going to be test. Okay, so that is going, to, I'm going to close this one, and this one, that's the basic Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to stop the Notebook server, Control-C, and I'll say yes. Okay, so it's shutting down the kernel, and I've shut down the Jupyter Notebook. All right, so now I have that test.ipymb. If you look at that one, you're going to have some additional uh, JSON there. You, know, you can see the print hello world and the output of that as well. Um, you know, this one, it really isn't intended to be edited, uh, the text file, but the notebooks that you create with Jupyter Notebook will also be compatible with Jupyter Lab. So let's install that one as well. This is the next generation Jupyter Notebook. And I'm going to go ahead and just install that with Jupyter Lab P3. 
pip3 install Jupyter Lab. Now there are other environments you can download like Anaconda that include all the packages there. And those are nice because you can just download and install one thing. But uh, this is nice because then you only have one distribution of Python and you can install all of your packages in one place. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and do Jupyter now lab instead of uh, Jupyter Notebook. And you'll see a little bit of a difference here. Uh, you can create either a notebook or a console. And you can also have a text file, terminal, markdown file, or contextual help. And there are a lot of different add-ons for this as well. So very similar to Jupyter Notebook, um, but some additional nice features for debugging. Okay, I can run here, or I can just do the control enter like I've done before, or shift enter to get a new cell. Okay, and then it shows up down here, um, the untitled IPYMB, and I can save this as, you know, something, save notebook as something else. Okay, I'm going to call this one test2. All right, so there's my other one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shut this one down. I want to show you one more integrated development environment that's very nice. Okay, and that is VS Code. In this case, I'm going to do sudo snap install double dash classic and then code. And that will go out and download okay, VS Code and then install it. And then if I'd like to run it, I can just type code. And that will start up the Visual Studio Code. This comes from Microsoft. It's an open source integrated development environment, not just for Python, but many other languages as well. And what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and do new file. And I would say print hello world. Okay, I'll save this. And it gives me an option of how I want to save it. And I'll say test2.py. And now it says that um, you can uh, put a tip, you can change the Python interpreter used by Python extension by clicking on the Python version in the status bar. Okay, so I got it. And if you don't have Python installed, or it's the very first time that you've ever used Python uh, with VS Code, then it'll have something that'll pop up down here that will say, would you like to install uh, the Python um, extension for this? And you just click yes, and it'll install it for you. Okay, so I'm going to run it, and here it says user bin python3, and then it ran the test2, and there you can see hello world. So this is very nice. It can also run Jupyter Notebooks as well. Uh, that's one of the recent additions to VS Code. Okay, so we can say a new file, and if I do uh, print hello, okay. I'm going to save this, and I'm going to do test3.ipymb. Okay, now here it's starting up a Jupyter server. You can see that it started it up as a local one. And then you can add cells. Um, okay, you can insert cells and print hello. Okay, and then run them. So it's a Jupyter notebook within Visual Studio Code. All right, so uh, if you need to install any other packages, uh, you can just come back to pip, pip3 install gecko, for example, for machine learning and optimization. All right, and then you can import uh, any package that you want uh, in these Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter Lab, or VS Code, because you're using this uh, Python 3 that was installed with the system. Okay, so that's it for the install. I've shown you uh, three different integrated development environments. There are more that are available. Most of these are going to be available in all platforms, Mac OS, Linux, Windows. Um, in Linux, it's just particularly easy to install and get started. 
Okay, if you need more help, especially with Windows, which seems to be one of the harder ones, I put some more help here on my course. If you go to Schedule, and then to Install Python at the very top, it just gives some more recommendations on getting started with Python, package management with pip or conda, and offline installation, and some other things as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, leave a comment or question below, and I'd be glad to get to that.